Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Kalin. Today I'd like to talk about binary search trees. Where we want to start here is with the dictionary abstract data type. The data for that is items with unique keys that are used to locate the items. So the idea behind a dictionary is that we're storing a bunch of things in this dictionary and we want to be able to look them up. Not unlike the way we look up meanings for words by looking up the words. So there are three major operations for a dictionary. First, we want to be able to find and return an item based on the key. Of course, in order to have things to find, we have to be able to insert items into the dictionary. And then we often want to be able to remove items from the dictionary. There are exceptions, cases where we never take anything back out, but in many cases we do want this capability. Now, some dictionaries we have sorted so that we have an ordering to the dictionary. Of course, the dictionaries that this concept is based on are all sorted. We can have a few additional operations that we might be interested in in that case. One would be to simply list all of the items in order. Another may be to find the smallest item and another to find the largest item. So binary search trees are one of our implementations for a sorted dictionary. A binary search tree is, first of all, a binary tree. And in that tree, for each node in the tree, everything in the left subtree has a smaller key than the node's key. And everything in the right subtree has a larger key than that node. In addition, every subtree is a binary search tree. So if we look at an example of a binary search tree, we have here 30 as the root. And we see that everything in the left subtree is smaller than 30. Everything in the right subtree is larger than 30. Then if we look at the left subtree, the 18 is larger than everything to its left and smaller than everything to its right. And each of these subtrees, this is true. So this would be a binary search tree. Now the first operation we want to be able to do in our search tree is to find things. The basic approach is I'm going to check the roots key. If it's equal to the thing I'm looking at, then I found it. If I'm looking for something smaller than the root, then I head left and search the left subtree. If I'm looking for something larger than the roots key, then I search the right subtree. If at any point as I'm searching, I need to go to a subtree that doesn't exist, an empty subtree, then we did not find the item. So one example, searching for 41, 30 is smaller than 41, so I'm going to head right. Then I look at the 50, the 41 is smaller than the 50, so I need to go left now. At this point, 41 equals 41. I found what I was looking for. Another example, searching for 19. So 19 is smaller than 30. I need to go left. It's larger than 18, so I head right. Smaller than 24, so I head left. Smaller than 21, so I had left, but that is null. So now I know that the 19 is not, in fact, in the tree. And that's the basic operation for searching in a binary tree. So in order to have anything to look for, I, of course, need to be able to insert into my tree. The process here is similar to the find. We're going to locate the empty subtree where the item should go and then insert the new node at that spot. It's important to make sure we understand that we always insert leaves into our tree. We never mess with the structure of the tree as we do insertion. So if we want to insert 16 into this tree, we start looking at the 30. 16 is smaller, so we head to the 18. 
16 is smaller than 18, so we had left again. 16 is bigger than 10, so we had right. 16 is bigger than the 13, so we had right. But here we actually have the null we're looking for. So we now insert the 16 to the right of the 13. Now the third operation we were interested in was deletion. Here we're again going to find as we have with the find and the insert, but we're going to need to keep track of the parent because the parent is where the deletion will actually happen. So we have three different cases here. One is that the node to delete is a leaf, and this will be pretty straightforward. The next possibility is that the node to delete has one child. This is still pretty easy to deal with. The third option is that the node to delete has two children, which is a little more interesting than the other two and requires us to do a little work with the structure of our tree. So deleting a leaf, we're simply just going to remove the node. So what happens, the parent gets null for the empty tree in place of the node that was deleted. So in this particular case, an example of deleting the 28 here. So I'm going to search down and see that the 24 has the 28 as its child, the thing we're trying to delete. So then I'm simply going to replace that right child with my null for the empty tree and the 28 is gone. Now, if the node I want to delete has a child, then I don't simply want to put a null there I need to do something to keep the child. So what I'm going to do is to replace the node with its child. So in this example, we're trying to delete the 13. So we go and we find that the 10 is the parent of the 13, which is on its right. And we see that 13 has one child. So what we're going to do is to simply replace with the 16 we look at deleting a node with two children, as I said, it's a little more complex and we need to start dealing with some of the structure of the tree. So I'm first going to show you the way people often do it that is not the way we want to do it. So don't do it this way. The idea here, we're deleting the 50. So what we might be tempted to do would be to take one of the children and replace the 50 with that child. After all, that works great for us with our single child case. But then we have to do something with the other child. So then the idea would be we'd simply insert that subtree where it goes in relation to the one that we replaced. So if we took the 41 and made it the parent in place of the 40, then we would end up attaching that subtree rooted at 68 as the right child of 43. This is not what we want. The problem with this is that we like short bushy trees. The reason we like short bushy trees is because if a tree is as short as it can be, it has log in height. If the height is on the order of log n, then these operations we're doing, finding, inserting, deleting, are all log n operations. And that sounds good to us. On the other hand, we don't like tall skinny trees because if the tree is very tall and skinny, it becomes big O of n height. It can devolve to just be a long length list with extra pointers hanging off the side. And if it's big O of n height, then the operations are also linear. And that is not nearly as good as log n. And what was happening with us taking one of the children and then inserting the other child at the bottom of that subtree is that we're developing a tall, skinny tree instead of a short, bushy one. So a better approach would be to replace the deleted node 
with one of its descendants so that the current shape of the tree is being maintained. So if we think again about our case of deleting the 50, there are two different nodes we could use to substitute for the 50 that would keep us in balance as a nice search tree, everything's in the right place, and we haven't really made the tree any taller. So one of those options would be the largest item on the left, which would be the 43. So we'd simply go left once and then head right as far as we can to get that largest element on that side. And the other option would be the smallest item on the right. So we would simply head right and then go left as far as we could, getting in this case to the 54. I tend to pick the largest on the left. I like the alliteration. Picking the smallest on the right is also generally fine. We end up with that in place of the 50. We still have a search tree. We haven't made the tree any taller. We're all happy. What if, however, that replacement node has a child? Note that it can't have two children because we do head left or right as far as we can go. And so if there are two children, we're not yet to the spot that we're going for. We don't have the node we want. But we can have one child. And what we can do is to simply say, we're gonna treat this as if we're deleting that node here. So we're gonna just put that one child in place of the thing we're using to substitute for the node with two children. So here we have an example of deleting the 18. So the node we wanna pick here to replace the 18 is the 16, largest on the left but it does have a child. So what we need to do here is we're gonna go ahead and take the 16 and replace the 18 with it. But then we're going to put the 12 in the place where the 16 was. And if it had any children, it would just carry them along with it. So in this case, we end up with the tree in this state. We said there were a few other operations we were interested in. One of those would be simply getting the elements in order. To do that, we're going to just use our in-order traversal of the tree, and that will give us all the elements in order according to the sorting that we're using to organize the tree. Another thing we might be interested in is finding the smallest value in the tree. And there, we're simply going to start at the root and head left. So we head to the 18, and then to the 10, and then finally to the four. There's no further left we can go, so the four is the smallest element. Similarly, we'll find the largest element in the tree, should we be interested in doing that, by starting at the root and heading right. So we get to the 50, to the 68, and finally to the 84, which is the largest element. I hope this has helped you feel a little more comfortable with what binary search trees are all about and how the different operations with them work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.